Hello folks and welcome to the channel or welcome back and in the previous episode we actually have shot blasted the tower room wall and we discovered that there were a couple of cracks in the wall and that we have to fill in here and there some bricks and repoint certain locations and this is what we're going to do in this video and to repair the damage on the wall you're going to need a couple of tools of course we have a big slash hammer here but also we have like three different chisels. This is a small chisel which we're going to use to knock out the joints in between the bricks. Then we have a medium size uh, where we do corrections with. And then I have a bigger chisel which is this one right here that you can cut bricks in half or lift bricks out. So these are the things you're going to need as a minimum. And of course we're going to need a couple of products and one of the products I like to use to fill up the cracks is actually a chemical anchor. This is typically the product that you use to anchor in bolts into a wall and it's a two component kind of system. It's called Vinylester and it's very strong. I have the heavy duty one. It comes in different brands and this is the sprout that you're going to use and you see the little orange spiral inside it's mixing those two products that are inside and then with this sprout here we can go into the opening or the crack in the wall and this becomes very hard and is very uh, sticky so that's what i like to use because you can't really put in your cement or your bastard mortar all the way deep into it but with this method you can so that is a good product and to be very honest I used it before and it works very well. Now that is a good product to fill up cracks but it is not a product that will bring back the structural strength of the wall at all. So if your wall is loose because of a crack and then you really need to rebuild that wall because otherwise you can't get that strength back. The cracks in the wall are the result of a bombardment that happened in the First World War. By nightfall of November the 1st. 1918. The 37th Infantry pushed through and was able to set up a few advanced units located on the eastern bank of the Scheld. The 91st Infantry asked permission to build footbridges. Two footbridges and a pontoon bridge were completed the same evening. On the 5th of November, the order was given. Test the bridgehead. The Germans, however, offered fierce resistance with heavy mortar attacks, damaging the farm. And I have this information from the farmers who used to live here. And the farm has been for many generations in that family. So their grandparents told them that this was the result. And in fact, there is even evidence and there's even paperwork on it uh, after the war when all the damage was recorded and the Germans actually had to pay back a lot of the damage. And at that time, they have rebuilt the tower. That's also when the pier was missing on top of the roof, which you saw in another video. Any given crack in a wall should not move. If the crack is moving, then you have a problem and you have really a structural problem. So one way of checking it is if you have a crack somewhere is actually to draw a line across it and then measure the distance. And then you can actually check it out later and see if that distance changes. So here we have now a marker. I can measure the distance and I can see every so often if that changes or not. Another good method is to attach a glass plate across the crack. Make sure it is attached very well to the wall with some real sticky stuff. And then see if that glass plate is cracking or not. If the wall is moving, it will break the glass. Now don't use very thick glass, use very thin glass for that. If you look closely onto this wall, you can see that the joints and the mortar that is in between the bricks is not really cement at all. It is actually chalk and sand. That's what people used to use in those days. So if you're going to repair a wall like this, then you must have exactly the same mixture. Don't use cement if you don't have to. Try to use chalk with uh, shells in it and then some sand. And to create the bastard mortar, I'm going to use river sand and I'm gonna use chalk. So here's one of the cracks. So I'm just gonna chisel this out and see how deep this goes and this is the way we're going to fix this now this is a little bit of work to do but at the end this will uh, fix that problem see how loose that is now here 
I can go pretty deep, so I'm not going to need this uh, chemical bonding. So this is how I have to clean this whole area, and then uh, we can actually um, start putting the mortar in. I cleaned up this crack and as you can see I have gone quite deep, as deep as I could. And now I'm going to fill that back up with bastard mortar. But also I had one brick here, in fact there's a second brick that I actually knocked loose. And I can take the brick out and guess what I have there? A long hole or a deep hole. And this is not abnormal on old buildings. They didn't have scaffolds all the time, so often they would just make a hole in the wall to put a beam in to support their wooden scaffold. And then afterwards they would just fill that up again in the front. So that is not uncommon to find on old buildings. But again, here we're going to fill that back up. And most likely I will fill up the inside completely. Uh, we'll see. Um, because that of course is a weak spot. Although it's a very small hole and bricks are overlaying, not much of an issue. All right, I'm done with cleaning up the cracks in the wall and I have went very deep on those, as deep as I could. I also have removed some bricks here where the staircase will be because here we're going to put new bricks up. Well, not new bricks, but old new bricks. So everything is going to be rock solid again. Now, I don't think I'm going to need my chemical bonding for the cracks that I have here because I was able to clean them out quite deep and quite good. So. It's not going to be necessary uh, to use that. In other cases, I might use it uh, where the cracks are harder to get to. They are more narrow, but these are pretty wide cracks, as you can see. If you look here, these cracks are, you know, I can put my hand in, basically. So it's easy to fill those up with mortar. Now, I still have to vacuum clean them, basically, and get it all all the dust out of it because there's still a bit of dust in it and dust doesn't help really if you go in to uh, put new mortar up. So you have to make sure that all this is dust free or as good as dust free and all the loose parts are out. And then uh, we're going to wet the bricks uh, as much as we can with a spray and then uh, we're going to start pointing. All right. As you can see, we got lots of debris coming out of the wall. To fill up the cracks on the wall, you're going to need a trowel of different sizes. I have a small one and a big one, and as you can see, they've been used quite a bit. But you're also going to need a jointer, and this is a jointer. And this is a smaller jointer, so depending on the crack, you might need different sizes. And then you have kind of a platform, or I don't know what you call it. Um, that's where you put your... Um, bastard mortar on and then you just point it into the wall like this. So this is always very handy to have. And of course you need a couple of brushes. I have a very stiff brush here to brush out the uh, opening in the wall and then a final softer brush to soften up the joint at the end so it blends in nicely with the rest. And of course a water can, a spray can, so I can actually spray onto the wall uh, before I put the uh, bastard uh, mortar into the um, joints. The problem with chalk is that it tends to absorb humidity from the air and then you get these hard pieces inside. But you can crush them very easily. So you can't use these hard pieces in your bastard mortar. So I typically zift it. So let me show you what I do with this. So you don't need to throw these bags away. There's no need for that. You can see that all the small pieces are falling through. But this is the side of a bag, and you can see all the hard parts. But no big deal, you know, just rub it through. 
and it becomes fine powder at the end. And if you look carefully, you can see some parts of shells and uh, this chalk is a mixture of chalk and shells actually. And now we got some nice pulverized chalk. So I'm going to use a ratio of 2 to 5. Um, I changed my mind a little bit, so I'm going to have five scoops of sand. And I don't want to make too much of it. Mix it dry. All right. And afterwards I will put the water in to bond it. Let's see, yeah, it's still a little bit too wet I think, but it's going to dry fast on those bricks, so I might give it a try like this. So first give it a good brush, so that most of the dust is gone. And the next thing is to spray it all wet, so I'm going to start with this opening here. I want to put it as deep as I can. The tricky part is always to get the color right and I can already tell the color is not going to be right but that's okay. I could have used more yellowish sand but I didn't. And this is how we're going to fill it up guys. So this is going to take a bit of time. Continue with the rest of it and then I'm going to let it dry up and every so often I'll spray a little bit of water on it so it connects properly. So what we put in is has dried up a bit so now we can brush it to make it look a bit more rough. The only thing I don't like too much about it is that the color is slightly different than the other color. Um, it has to go a little bit more yellowish. So for that I actually have a product, a color here which you can put into your cement. You can see how kind of ochre that is and I added a little bit to my cement and here it is. So now that's far more yellowish and obviously it's going to get lighter when it dries up. So I'm going to try that on the more visible places. So sometimes you need to match things up. So let's see what this color does. I think this is going to look better. Oh yeah. That blends in a lot better. Now this is a big gap, it's going to take a lot of product. Now we have to spray it a couple of times and hopefully the color now is a lot better. And this is a real vertical thing so this is always going to be very difficult to do.
Now I'm going to roughen that up a bit. So that's about it. So we are nearing the end of this video and as you can see the wall is now finished. Of course we still have to put the stone varnish on but we will only do this after the joints have dried up. There isn't a lot of color difference but here and there there is a little bit. It's always hard to match the color of these joints. Nevertheless I think I'm quite satisfied with it. So let me show you another view and then I'm going to tell you what we're going to do next because we ain't done yet. I also had to run a couple of electrical conduits coming from the tower room. So I'm going to work these into the wall here, but that's something that we will need to do probably tomorrow. Now let me show you what we're going to do in the next episode. So this is the, this is a very temporary floor and uh, I will have to replace this plywood here tomorrow so we can actually install oak planks, but I still have to uh, create those oak planks. I still have to do the tongue and groove on them and put them through the planer because I haven't done that. So that's a lot of work for tomorrow and that's gonna be most likely in the next video. Sometimes plan do change and I was planning to have a sunken bath up here because that's why I have this area so much lower. <laughs> But unfortunately, the girlfriend decided otherwise. She wants to see actually a walk-in shower. She's not interested in a, a bath because we have one on the other side of the house. So I will have to do some work here to make that level with this floor. So I've got a couple of beams here. So we'll install these beams uh, like so. Um, but of course, sunk in and then we'll create a platform here but that's all for the next episode. And then finally, we're gonna put the ceiling in here and then we put a wall up here with a door and then we should be all done, at least for now, because there's still a lot of work that needs to happen here. So I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you in my next video. Bye-bye. Time for a shower and a great dinner. <laughs>